about a month ago, I decided to put a wild idea to the test. And that's where this crazy GPU design came to be. So I took my existing Galax RTX 4060 Ti, removed all of the shroud and, and fans, and replaced them with four 40 millimeter fans, shooting air straight through the heatsink. But it didn't perform as expected. And that's where this comes in. So instead of going smaller, we're going bigger with two 120 millimeter Arctic fans. So let me walk you guys through the process of how I put this together and see how good it performs. So just to give you guys a feel for what the 4060 Ti used to look like directly out of the factory from Galax, here is the shroud and the cooler. So you get two 102 millimeter fans. So pretty big actually for an out of the box graphic card. But we're gonna set things up so we can actually use 120 millimeter off the shelf fans from whatever supplier you wanna get them from, be it Noctua, Arctic, Corsair. You wanna throw some really, really cool RGB fans on there. You can definitely do that with this. So I'm just gonna mock up the heatsink just so I can make sure that we're designed designing everything to actually fit and screw in and make sure everything works as expected. We've got the two fans in there as well. And I'm just going to gap them a little bit off the radiator and design what the shroud is going to look like underneath to actually connect the fans to the actual heatsink. Uh, and I also just mocked up the end plate of the GPU as well, just to make sure we have all the clearances that we need to get this thing to work. Now, I kind of overthought the motherboard clearances on this. Luckily, it didn't have any or, or cause any issues down the line. But this is what it's actually going to look like in terms of the shroud that will connect our fans to our heatsink. I cut it in half, that way I can 3D print it in two different sections, and then we'll just glue the two halves together. I wish I did have uh, just a little bit bigger of a 3D printer so I could fit this in on one print just to keep the structural integrity a little bit stronger. Um, but even with that said, the PLA that I'm printing with should hold up fine. We could even print this with ABS to get a little bit stronger of a bond. Um, but overall, like this was a really simple design just to get a nice sleek shroud that redirects all of our air directly from our 120 millimeter fans straight through our heatsink. And using Fusion 360, it's super, super simple to get these things designed up and then send it over to our Creality Ender 3 V2 and get them all printed out and ready to actually install. So right off the 3D printer, this is what it ends up looking like. So we have our two different halves, uh, PLA. Uh, we, we did use quite a bit of support material as well. You can see it in the background there, but now I'm just gonna use some super glue to glue these two halves together. Now, I also wish, considering I didn't print it in one solid piece, that I did maybe use more of like a puzzle piece type of construction to actually get these things to sit together a little bit better. You can see me struggle in there to try to get these things perfectly lined up so that I could actually glue them uh, and make sure they actually stayed secured. So if I did do this again, I would 100% make sure uh, that I made a better interlock between these two halves. But once they are glued together, it's super, super simple to connect them to the fans. Screws are, screw holes are already in there, so we'll just screw them directly into our 120s. Again, like I said, you could use whatever 120s you want. Super thin 120s to make sure that you're keeping it the same thickness of a card that it was before, or you could use super thick or super high RPM fans as well. So that's what is super cool about this build is it gives you full customization of whatever fans you wanna use. But of course we designed this thing to fit and work seamlessly with the existing heatsink. So I just get to use the existing screws, the existing heatsink mounting points, and directly screw everything into the heatsink. So it's one solid piece, no cable ties, no glue, no tape, nothing like that. Everything looks almost out of the factory. And I'm super interested to see if any other companies, I mean, we do have the Asus Noctua setup where you have two Noctua fans, but with this thing all put together, now it's time to actually get the GPU die, the GPU, the, the back end of the graphics card installed on to our heatsink. And again, it's like super simple. It's like you're installing the regular shroud. Now, of course, we don't have the existing fan connectors or the RGB connector that are on the PCB of the GPU to connect here. We're just gonna use a fan header on our motherboard and control the RGB, well, no RGB in this case, but control the fan speed and things like that with our motherboard RPM controls. But you could also install uh, an external kind of uh, fan control software like fan control that would allow you to actually control the RPM, uh, uh, RPM speed of the fans directly off the GPU temperatures, which we don't get to do with the motherboard. It doesn't have that information. So we're just gonna run these things at 100% uh, fan speed 
uh, pretty much all the time. But you can, of course, tune that in with some software. So once we get this thing all put together, you'll see how good this thing looks. And it really does kind of look out of the box factory. Like, of course, it could look a little bit nicer with the the, the cabling and, and cable management. Uh, but overall, like it looks really, really good. Of course, we did add like an extra slot worth of thickness. So now it's, it is a three slot card right out of the box. But in terms of temperatures, now out of the box, this thing was hitting right around 63, 64C with the 102 millimeter fans from Galax. Uh, but here again, we're, we're sitting right around the same temperature, 62, 63 degrees C. So we're not seeing a crazy improvement in terms of temperatures, at least in this particular scenario with Firmark just running all the time. But what we are seeing is a much quieter GPU setup with these fans. So the next thing up that I wanna do is test overclocking of this card with these fans. So we overclocked it with a 202 megahertz offset on the GPU core and another 1100, almost 1200 on the memory frequency. And as you can see here, we're still keeping those exact same temperatures, like 63, 64 degrees C max, but we're sticking right at 2970 megahertz all the way throughout this 3D Mark test which is an extremely, extremely good overclock on this card. We could almost hit 3,000 uh, or three, almost three gigahertz on this card sustained for the entire 3D Mark test, but this was a really good uh, showcase of what this card is capable of if you have the good, uh, a good, good temperature control on the card itself. But I think in this scenario, we were definitely heat sink limited. Uh, the heat sink itself just couldn't maintain any more heat. But if we do take a look at the stock configuration, you can see here stock, we're hitting 65, in some cases 67, and we're definitely not getting as consistent a GPU frequency uh, sustained throughout the test. It's jumping between 2940, 2955, 2970, jumping between bins as it does heat up throughout the test. So I would say, even though this thing did score a little bit better stock, eight points higher, it's pretty much just up to the luck of the draw. Uh, I think the with the Arctic fans, it did score quite a bit better in terms of just temperatures and raw megahertz. So although this custom card maybe didn't perform exactly how I expected, I thought maybe we we're gonna see a few more degrees cut off of the temperatures on this thing. I think we're heat sink limited with the design of the 4060 Ti. Maybe we test this thing out with like a 4070 Ti or a 4080 that maybe has some 92 millimeter stock fans. We swap them out for the 120s. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below about this card. I think it's a really cool idea just because you do have the full customization potential with a card like this. You could swap in whatever fans you want. So let me hear all those comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, get subscribed to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.